Hi, it's Kate, and this is the fourth video? Sure, fourth video for week eight of Math 23. Let's talk a little bit about Taylor series. Uh, Taylor series are very uh, unique power series. The idea behind Taylor series is that they are, in fact, functions. That's what we care about so much. We no longer care just that whether a series particularly converges or diverges, but really what the sequence converges to. And I know we rare, so I said we're rarely able to compute that, but for some Taylor series we are, because we say a function f is defined by a convergent power series, and whenever the absolute value of x is less than r, so it's on this particular interval. When, so what this means is that if our input lies somewhere in here, then when we plug in our value for x into this series, we get a convergent power series. And what's particularly interesting is it's easy to show that if a function is defined this way, what these actual a sub k's are, are the various derivatives evaluated at zero divided by k factorial. Now why would they ever be defined that way? Let's take a look. Okay, here I've written out some of the first few terms of this power series. Note that the zeroth derivative of f is actually just the function itself x to the 0 is just 1, and 0 factorial also 1, because factorial is the number of ways you can arrange however many things. And the number of ways you can arrange 0 things is just the one way, where there are no, no elements. Anyway, we then have f prime of 0 times x plus f double prime of 0 uh, divided by 2 factorial times x squared plus the third derivative of f evaluated 0 over 3 factorial times x cubed and the fourth derivative value at 0 over 4 factorial times x to the fourth. And at first you might be thinking, why the heck is this happening? Well, let me show you something really interesting. What we call the center of the power series is the value around which we're sort of building this function. The center of this power series is 0. It is the value, the input value for x, where we're sort of figuring out uh, its behavior. So let's take a look. What is happening when x equals 0? Well, when x equals 0, the only thing we're left with, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0. So when x equals 0, all that's left out of all the infinite terms that go here is just this one, f of 0, the function value at 0. So that's interesting. Our power series has the same function value as this function f upon which it's built at 0. Then we take a look at the first derivative. Let's take the first derivative of this. Now when we look at the first derivative of 0, and we evaluate it when x equals 0, now this term disappears, this term disappears, this term disappears, all these terms disappear because they're all being multiplied by x. So when we evaluate this, for this entire series first derivative at 0, we have, ah, the function's first derivative at 0. You might notice that if we took the next derivative, the second derivative of this power series, with respect to x, this term would go away. We would then be left with, huh, this. And sure enough, this crazy long power series, when we evaluate its second derivative at, at x equals 0, it, every other term but the first goes to 0. And what we're left with is, is this function's second derivative at 0. So what a power series is really doing, this continues to happen. If we took the third derivative, this would go away. We'd be left with this. Note that 3 times 2 cancels with the factorial, and we're, le we're left with the third derivative evaluated at 0. And this keeps happening. So what a power series really is, is it is the same as its function on this particular interval of convergence right, from negative r to r, and the way it manages to do that is by having the same function value at its center, at x equals 0, the same first derivative at, at its center, the same second derivative at, as its center, the same third derivative as at its center, and you can watch videos and things on YouTube of watching sort of, if I just looked at this term, what would the function look like? If I looked at these two terms, this would be a linear approximation. If I looked at these three terms, that would be a quadratic approximation. This would be a cubic approximation. This would be a quartic approximation. It gets better and better and better and better and better. And as you take this to the limit, we end up with an infinite series that on a particular interval behaves exactly the same way as the function, 
because we basically created this imposter function using polynomials where we have these coefficients in x squared and we choose these coefficients very specifically so that this polynomial has exactly the same function value and first and second and third and fourth and infinite number of derivatives as the actual function itself at the center. So the polynomial has the same function value and derivatives as the function it's based on at its center. Now it may or may not surprise you that trig functions uh, sine, cosine, as well as exponential functions, e to the x, they are very easily represented because they have these nice sort of cyclical derivatives that you can compute uh, using uh, these to, to build these coefficients. But the issue is that it's very, very tricky to extend this practice to functions that are differentiable many times but are, that are not necessarily defined by power series, like trig functions that are defined geometrically, or the function uh, the square root of 1 plus x. Now there are some interesting uses for power series. One is looking at Taylor's theorem with remainder. And so the issue is that if you take a look at the mean value theorem and you say that f of x minus f of 0 is equal to f prime of y times x for some y uh, in the interval from 0 to x. This is just rearranging this fact. So we know that's true from the mean value theorem and we generalize it to the situation using a power series. So what this is saying is that f of x minus f of 0 minus not just the function value and the derivative, but minus the, this is basically the entire power series up to a particular element, up to the n minus 1th, uh, x to the n minus 1th coefficient, is going to be equal to the nth derivative of f at some point y on the interval divided by n factorial times x to the n. And so this is pretty tricky uh, to determine, but it is a, you can, we can definitely prove it. You guys have the skills to do it. And you can prove it by induction and using Rawls' theorem. Now what's interesting is that if the right-hand side here approaches 0 in the limit of large n, then the Taylor series converges to the function. Interesting. So that means that the infinite degree polynomial converges to the function uh, on which it's based. So this is true if all the derivatives are bounded by a single constant c. So it doesn't matter which one we're looking at, but they're all bounded by a single constant c. And this criterion is sufficient to establish familiar Taylor expansions like here's what e to the x's Taylor expansion looks like. Again, remember what these coefficients actually are. They're the nth derivative of the function evaluated at the center over n factorial. So e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, so on and so forth. Cosine x equals 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial minus x to the sixth over 6 factorial and so on and so forth. Oop, we should change the sign there. That's a typo. We'll talk about Taylor's theorem with remainder uh, with m in much greater detail in class. Now the, the second version of this is saying that the fundamental theorem of calculus says that if you have a function and its derivative, they're related in this particular way. If you want to take the integral of the derivative from the, on the interval from 0 to x, then what you want to do is evaluate the function f at one endpoint and subtract off the function evaluated at 0, the other endpoint. The generalization is saying that the difference between f of x and the first, let's say, n terms in that Taylor series, we start with the function value and we go all the way up to the n minus 1th power of x, then that would be equal to this integral. And we'll actually be able to prove that by induction using integration by parts. Now there is a very famous counterexample, the function e to the negative 1 over x for x greater than 0 and uh, the 0 function for x less than or equal to 0 has the property that the remainder does not approach a limit of 0. So that basically means that the function itself does not equal the sum of its Taylor series. And of course that's quite a pain because the idea behind Taylor series is that if you're on this interval of convergence then you should be converging to the function value. But in this particular case it does not work. Power series and Taylor series are very uh, tricky things to understand. I think if at the end of this video you can kind of understand 
where they come from, what they're doing. To me, I always explain them as imposter functions. Like if I were going to build a polynomial that behaved just like this function that is not a polynomial, like cosine or sine or e to the x, how would I do that? Well, I would start with the model of linear approximation, right? You have the same function value at a particular point and the same first derivative at a particular point, and then I would use the fact that I could create this polynomial that has the same second derivative as the function at that point and the same third derivative as the function at that point and the same fourth derivative as the function at that point, and just keep going, layered on uh, derivative after derivative after derivative, and eventually, in the limit, I would be perfectly uh, mimicking that function. I call it an imposter function when I teach 1B. But that's the idea behind what a Taylor series is doing. And so what Taylor's theorem is discussing is when we can actually talk about when the series is equal to the function itself. If you come away from this video understanding a little bit about where the series go comes from, and then in class and in your reading, you'll really be able to go line by line to look at this Taylor's theorem with remainder idea, I think you'll really get a good handle on the material for this week. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know.